Did we miss yesterday one of the greatest examples of windmilling of all time? Windmilling. Oh, John, no. wow. John, do you keep your news from day to day? Yeah. Yes. The blue line story from yesterday. Okay. Apparently yeah. the blue line uh, rail line would cross the grand rounds. Right. So now what oh, you, yes. so yeah. now you've got light rail, which we're, we're hectored into believing is the only way to go. Uh, in conflict with bicyclists, which is the second best way to go. <laughs> so they don't know what the hell to do because the blue line will cross the Grand Rounds pathways. Right. Yeah. Now, John I, did I, have that story. John. Right. And we yep. missed we missed the windmilling aspect of it. I believe the is it the park board that's somebody's arguing against the blue yep. line running. Uh, through the grand rounds. It is the park board. Yep. Yep. I believe they settled their strike, by the way. Mm. Yes, they did. So I can get back to a raise. Did they get, I have no idea. Uh, Did anybody even feel the fact that they were not, uh, I don't live in Minneapolis monitoring the parks. Okay. Yeah. John, what'd you find? Uh, proposed light rail station in North Minneapolis means more than 200 trains will cross the treasured ground rounds, bike and pedestrian trail. Every day, a prospect that deeply concerns some members of the Minneapolis Park and Rec Board. One of the greatest examples of windmilling that's yeah. ever come across our desk. You, 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 the, the, the political class we've managed to elect is in the business of demonizing personal transportation, and they just can't tell you enough to ride your bike or take light rail. And now you have a collision of light rail and bikes at the Grand Rounds. I think it's fantastic. Yes, it, is. it is fantastic. Yes, some, it park, is. some park board members would like to go underneath. They want to burrow a tunnel. Well, I think that so. won't cost Let's much. Let's spend yeah. a billion oh. more. Yeah. Why not spend more money to do it? So three point two billion extension. Yeah. If I hear you correctly, it's it's simply an intersection, right? The grand it rounds is just basically a signpost. Okay, oh, right. You know. well, why not? Wouldn't it be the cheapest thing to do? Would be for the bikes. Just build a little bridge, pave a bridge, and let's go. How about we? I can even save you more money. How? Throw up a stop sign. There you go. I right can there. even. Yeah, I that's can stop sign. Thank okay, you, you want to play that game? I'll save. I'll save you more money. Oh, you can't. Uh, my method is the best. You don't need How a blue line extension. Well, okay. this yeah. thing is all a bunch <laughs> of BS anyway. If you want to, okay. If you want to save me three point two billion, that's I what, guess you right. win. That's what I, I want to do. But but this thing, is twenty thirty. I mean, none of us are going to be alive in twenty thirty. Here's the thing, though. Kenny, Kenny, Kenny makes a point. It's not like the blue line is traveling all day. It's every twenty minutes. Put up a yield sign. You don't even need a stop sign. You can see her coming. Like two two hundred like times it would cross. But Chris's, you also two hundred oh, times according to John. Times, right. That's right. a lot of interruption of of well meaning cyclists, especially in January. I'm going to take right. a different perspective. <laughs> okay, Matt, put up a sign that says, "Hey, bikers, don't worry. You don't need to stop. Don't even look." And then, boom. Well, uh, it has become. Yeah. It has become. Let's get some serious BS oh out of the gosh. way. Because we got to talk about the Olympics today. We're going to have a contest. Oh, like have who a, can sing the best? Da, no, da. we're taking a poll today. Oh, we're take best Olympics commercials. Yeah. No, Top that's what I did. What uh, it has become uh, newsworthy of late that we're, that the news media is telling us, the conventional news gatherers are telling us that Kamala Harris was not the border czar. Is that the gist of yes. the current news? That Correct. she was not... And and is and this is thought to be done on her behalf. Yes, that maybe this is a cushioning type effect to uh, take the heat off her for the disaster at that the border. The mere notion of her being a border czar is a right wing conspiracy. <laughs> well, for Pete's sake, she was the border czar. I, I have we, we proof here. Yeah, we know that. Well, Jordy has a good point. How far are we from the B? The news that's done by the B. What's the, the Babylon? The Babylon, the Babylon, Babylon B. B. We're, we're not. We're here. You know, the B yeah. would say presidential candidate Kamala Harris discre- distanced herself from Kamala Harris after <laughs> members of the press confronted her with questions about her past. And Jordy says, what's the difference between a Babylon B story and any mainstream media? It's getting to the point where there isn't any difference. No. Kamala Harris has distanced herself from Kamala Harris. Now, we have... Uh, 
these this is audio of all the news people who at one time said, of course, she's the border czar and are now saying she's not. I'll set it up better than that. Uh, there's an account I follow called News Busters. And the he- caption of this video is basically you don't hate the media enough. OK, but I'm allowing you to play it because even though it's News Busters, who I don't know much about, this audio is all real it's, and it all happened. It's 60 seconds and it's clips from various outlets. Right. CNN, MSNBC, CBS. Right. And it's the same thing from when uh, Kamala was named the border czar to now when she uh, uh, when after Biden dropped out, essentially. And that's uh, the pundits uh, talking about that very thing. Quote unquote, border czar. Vice President Harris was not a border czar. Meantime, Vice President and border czar Kamala Harris facing some backlash. What he said about Harris and immigration was not true. She was never appointed border czar. Uh, And this will be her first visit to the uh, U.S.-Mexico border region since she was appointed as the border czar by President Biden. People are going to have to counter the misinformation. You already hear folks talking about the border czar. She wasn't the border czar. President Biden tapped Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Harris, to be the border czar. Now, she wasn't the border czar. That's Uh what Republicans. Uh, labeled her. They were very critical of Kamala Harris, especially in her role as border czar. Now what she's up against is folks lying about her border record, calling her a border czar. Kamala Harris, who was appointed as the border czar. The Biden team didn't declare her the border czar. They wanted her to work on kind of the root causes of immigration. Mm -hmm. There has been so much criticism against Kamala Harris. You know, she was the the border czar. Calling her sort of the border czar, uh, which wasn't necessarily the case. So the border, if they weren't planning to address it in a major way, do not make her your border czar. She met with some of the Northern Triangle countries, but nothing has effectively changed. Boy, that's uh, that's so telling, isn't it? It, it really just, is. It really is. Well, here's the fact check. And Alpha News, of all people, have the fact check. Uh, as Vice President Kamala Harris began campaigning to become the next Democratic presidential nominee, media outlets started claiming she was never President Joe Biden's border czar. The claims are verifiably false. Kamala Harris was never Biden's border czar, Time magazine claimed. A USA Today fact-checked headline said, Harris's border work was on root causes of migration. She wasn't in charge. Axios wrote, the Trump campaign and Republicans have tagged Harris repeatedly with the border czar title, which she never actually had. Let me stop right there. When you go back to when she was named border czar, and I'll get to that in a moment, that was an affectation, I think, of the conventional news gatherers. I don't think Biden said you're the czar. I think news gatherers called her a czar. He he did. He did. Okay. Yeah. But the point is, well, the point uh, speaks for itself. PolitiFact wrote, claims that President Joe Biden named Harris the border czar and that she is responsible for overseeing U.S. border enforcement gained prominence at the Republican National Convention as the party sought to link her to his immigration policy. Biden did not put Harris in charge of overseeing border security. Well, it turns out that Harris was the second woman chosen to be the head of the border work. After 100 days on the job, Roberta Jacobson, well, wouldn't that be a trivia question? After 100 days on the job, Roberta Jacobson, President Joe Biden's first border czar, left the role on April 9, 2021. Kind of like the way Heather Mueller left uh, Walls' education department when the the bleep hit the fan. Skulked away. Her work was done. Oh, yeah. Uh, She left the role on April 9, 2021, after already grappling with large increases of migrants attempting to cross into the U.S., the Los Angeles Times reported, saying Biden's border czar is stepping down. Before she did, Biden announced in a March 24, 2021 news conference that Harris would be responsible for addressing the Southwest border surge that already began within days of him taking office. I can think of nobody who's better qualified to do this than the former California attorney general Biden said. Harris was chosen to lead the effort because the best thing to do is to put someone in the role when he or she speaks, they don't have to wonder about where the president is. 
Biden said. I don't even know what that means. When she speaks, she speaks for me. She doesn't have to check with me. She knows what she's doing. I hope we can move this along to address the increasing challenges at our southwest border. No one knows this better than the vice president. Mm -hmm. So if the media is telling you today that Kamala Harris was never the border czar, they are just flat out lying. lying to you. They're contradicting their own voices, which are on tape. In response, Harris thanked Biden and said, there's no question that this is a challenging situation. We, While we are clear that people should not come to the border now, we also understand that we will enforce the law because we can chew gum and walk at the same time. We must address the root causes that cause people to make the trek. She also looked forward to working with Congress to address root causes of migration. Okay, so what the media is going to hang their lies on is they're going to draw a, a hair's width line between her being the border czar and somehow looking at root causes as though there's a distinction. Biden didn't make that distinction when he appointed her. Right. Studying root causes does nothing to solve the issue. It's just babble. Of course it's babble. But I, I'm perfectly uh, comfortable with accepting the fact that for some reason now, it's it must be seen as troublesome to her. I can I can do this, by the way, because I have no one to vote for. So I, I'm kind of a guy in the middle here with no horse in the race. Yeah. So I can I can rip her and I can rip Biden because I don't have I don't have a horse in the race. I can't vote for either of them. But what this seems to me, this seems to be a concerted effort by the media uh, to soften the blow of her failure as a hey, as a so-called border czar. It's not the only case. Thank you, Kenny. I was just going to mention. I can that. take you if you're ready to shift gears to a whole different topic right. where the same thing is being done. All right. And it was earlier in this week where a um, Minneapolis Star Tribune writer, Andy Mannix, decides to go after Trump and the Republican Party for misusing the Minnesota Freedom Fund facts, where Trump and the Republican parties have said, or excuse me, people in the Republican Party have said at rallies um, that Harris endorsed this Minnesota Freedom Fund. And they used the example of a guy named Jaleel Stallings, a Minneapolis man that was bailed out of <clears throat> jail, excuse me, and then charged with the attempted murder of two police officers. The reporter, Andy Mannix, goes on to say that um, the Post fails to mention that Stallings was found not guilty by a jury or that one of the arresting officers can, was convicted of assault for beating him. But then, in the same piece, a couple of columns later, um, our guy Andy Mannix actually says that uh, the case of George Howard was convicted in a deadly road rage shooting after the organization helped secure his release. I can help you. Please Stallings do. is the person being used by the Trump campaign. Right. They, and they, they, was, they should have used someone else. They should have used George Howard. Right. Because Stallings, re, you'll recall the case in the post-George Floyd I do. frenzy. Yep. Uh, it happened to be a case one night where police in an unmarked vehicle were shooting rubber rounds at the people gathered. Correct. This guy, Stallings, didn't know he was being shot at by police, drew a gun for which he had a, a legal permit, permit and began up. firing back because he thought he was under attack. At yep. which point the police get serious about Stallings somehow were able to to show that they were police and get him to drop his gun. Then they beat the living crap out of him. Knees to the head are not a good thing. Knees to the head. They beat the living crap out of him. Yes, he was then bailed out by the Freedom Fund. Then okay. went on trial in Minneapolis yeah, yeah. and was acquitted of yeah. assaulting police officers and yeah. awarded. One point yeah. five million dollars by the city of Minneapolis. You're missing my point. I haven't this missed article any point. By Andy Mannix says that the Minnesota Freedom Fund is an innocent little thing, oh, okay. and it just yeah. helps um, people charged with minor crimes get out of jail. 
when in fact, in the case of George Howard, he went on to murder. Right. So the and so, and, and uh, no one better than Tom Hauser broke this down last night. Yeah. And Hauser pointed out, even though Stallings didn't get released from jail and go commit crimes, other people have, have done George Howard. But yes. the Trump campaign was too quick to rush into this and seize this scenario and use Stallings as an example of why uh, Harris is unfit. Uh, and to they the should have used Howard, not Stallings. 18 hours ago, WCCO put out a tweet that said, Trump falsely accuses Harris of donating to Minnesota Freedom Fund, bailing out dangerous criminals. That was fact checked. No, she X, donated. Not to the point where it time stamped when she actually tweeted this information out on June 21st, 2020 at 3.34 p.m., Minnesota time, Kamala Harris tweeted, if you're able to chip in now to the at Minnesota Freedom Fund right. to help post bail for those protesting on the ground in Minnesota. Whatever that, else that, whatever else Harris is, don't forget, she's a Mysterian. And a liar. She's a Mysterian. There's, just, there's, there's no doubt about it. Joe, I remember very well when that tweet came out during those days, and I considered it at the time and right now still very incendiary. Something you should not say. Right. Nobody in government should be saying that when Minneapolis is burning to the ground. I'm amused uh, at the response I've received to the news that Kamala Harris, I believe tonight, will appear on the RuPaul show. <laughs> Kamala Harris makes history on All Stars 9 as first sitting vice president to appear on RuPaul's drag show. Drag race, it's called, I think. Harris will guest star on Friday's All-Star 9 finale, okay? And I'm getting emails from GLers who are uh, on Trump's side of the aisle who say, isn't that classless? Uh, when you're running against Trump, how can anything be classless? <laughs> yeah, all that. No yeah. holds barred. How can anything be it. classless if you're running against Trump? I don't see it as being classless at all. It's She's what a Mysterian. Doing. This is what she's going to do. Mysterians no, believe in this gender uh, expansion. She, she's pandering to voters that don't read the newspaper, that don't know what's going on. So she, all she's doing is getting votes from dum-dums. Classless is defined by Trump, who is the most classless human being to ever run for the president of the United States. So you know what's off the you know what's off the table in this election? Class. Class. Anything, class. Anything, anything there wrong. is no class. such thing as class. Did you hear yeah. that? No yeah. class. Call me when you have no class. We're off the hook. Yeah, <laughs> we're good. And I got this I got I got other news for you. As long as I position myself as this intense observer of these two candidates. Trump is blowing it big time. He's blowing it. He's taking this for granted. He doesn't. He's not calculating how it's going to factor in that he's now the old guy. But where he really, he's blown it on two serious occasions. Number one. Number one was his acceptance of the nomination a week ago in Milwaukee when he went on for 92 minutes with the same bloviating BS he said all his life. He still... I said to the CP that night, I said, you know what he's doing? He's still lamenting his loss in 2020. Yes. He used that 90-minute speech to, to insist that he should have been president all along the previous four years. He, he blew should've. it. He had a chance to reintroduce himself to the American public with a 20-minute speech that said, thank you for this opportunity to uh, to have another go at this. I'm going to do my best, and I appreciate your confidence in me. Not only that, but he sat there like a Buddha for the whole week in a, in a suite staring at the thing like he was a king waiting to be called down to the throne. Go bleep yourself. Get out now, of here. the second the second time he blew it. Number two. I believe me, I can get just as bad about Ty Harris as I can about history. Trump. He's the, on a roll. The second time he blew it was just this most recently when Biden issued the letter saying he's withdrawing. Trump had a a despicable response when he should have said 
well, maybe we all accepted this or anticipated this, Mr. President, but thank you for years of, you know, even just lie, take just lie. Road. Take the high road. And yes. say, thank you for your years of service, and I hope you enjoy your your the years to come and uh, your uh, ice cream. And and have have great uh, uh, knowledge that we've appreciated your service to the country. And uh, we we personally hope to t t take it on from here, but we're involved in a great presidential race. May the best person win. And, <laughs> and anything, anything yeah. to say, to show decency as a human being. He can't. He cannot. He cannot be a de And I'm tired of you people. Do you think I'm not aware that he just played 18 holes of golf with Bryson DeChambeau for a YouTube special? I know that? more about golf than any email or mail in me knows in there. Hey, my little finger! Come on, I'm pinky. aware. It's I'm pinky. aware. That, and they all want to tell me, oh, Trump was so sweet. He's such a nice guy. Great. <laughs> That's great. I I'm happy for you. Right, but he's not a great guy. He's a piece of ass. Do, do we uh, do we have any thoughts since we're picking on Trump? Uh, no, I'm, right. I got Harris too. Don't worry, Harris no, I, is oh, just I know as you bad. Do. I'm, I'm very. I aware. have no one to vote for. Joe, I'm very aware that you have plenty of Harris too. But uh, the Fred Trump the Third uh, book coming out. Have you seen the excerpts? No, that's that's Have all thoughts on inadmissible that? Yeah, in court. Yeah. That's all BS. I, I that it is inadmissible <laughs> in court. Can uh, I? May I? Yes, Joe. <laughs> your rant that's it's really cute and it's fun to listen to yeah but it's the trump derangement syndrome has got the best of you I don't your have problem it. with no. trump is you can't accept him for who he is you want him to be somebody other than donald trump trump is trump and that's, and that's just unacceptable to me that's well, that's unacceptable. Not, that's your problem. That's right. It's not a that's problem. Your problem. It's, it's not. No, a it's problem. your problem. It's and not you've a let problem. It. You so, know in other words, I'm not allowed to have standards. Trump lives right here no. in you. No, you I carry know him people around where he lives right there. Here. I know people where he lives there. That doesn't happen to be me. You are so obsessed with him. I think Kenny just gave you an audio pat on the head. I did, Matthew. Just kind of want to, I there, did. there, there, cowboy. You okay? So you yeah, could just cookie. as easily say that I have Kamala Harris derangement syndrome. That so, I, my real question here, in all seriousness, I you might not be voting this this go around for the first time correct. in your life. You're absolutely correct. Which goes against everything that you and I have or argued maybe about. Maybe I'll go years. in and write in Royce or something. Or yes, Matt. Yes. Yes. Where yeah. is my cabinet? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I see two, where you're coming from. These but. two, this is Harris and Trump are worse than Biden and Trump. And I said, with Biden and Trump, there's no choice. Now, what do you say? I say take a break. So, is this worse <laughs> than Trump and Hillary? Because uh, if you oh, remember, God, that was yes. pretty bad. Yes. Really? Oh God, yes. I'd like to enter a conversation, I but I hate like, the emails. But Hillary was less qualified than um, Kamala is. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. 